Good morning from this cold and wet Saturday morning in North Carolina. We're going to be going over today uh, a litany of hammers. Um, what made me do this video is the fact that I cannot count how many times I've gone to someone's house to help them do something or while I was there saw something that needed to be done and said, hey, let me see, you know, some tools and they go get their little um, Frankenstein toolbox that's a little plastic thing and it's got like a adjustable wrench and a hammer and a maybe one of each screwdriver and a couple sockets that don't even have a ratchet like it, it's just a it's it's bad and then when they bring out their hammer this is typically what they have like a little eight or ten ounce uh, this is a seven but this is just a tiny little hammer that you would have to beat the crap out of something to get a nail to go in uh, to a piece of wood or whatever. But this is what they consider a hammer. Man, uh, no truer things have not been said. Um, that, that is not a, a hammer, okay? It is, but it's not what you would need if you're going to have one hammer. That's your, that's your uh, you know, all-encompassing hammer that, that it does everything that you could possibly need it to do at least get something with a little more heft than seven ounces. But people don't understand uh, tools and the people that don't use tools on a regular basis don't seem to care anyway, because again, they don't use them. So I'm gonna go over some of the things that you need to know about hammers because there's so many different things that come out of these. Um, and I, I think there's 28 sitting here. There are a few more that um, are in different places. I got some in my vehicles. I got some in different places, but these are the, the general tools that I use with regards to pounding devices, um, uh, blunt force trauma uh, instruments. And so we're going to go over this and kind of give you a, understand, a better understanding of, of what you're talking about and what they do and why you don't use one for the other and that kind of stuff. So we'll start with your typical claw hammer. This is basically for woodworking, okay? That's really all it's for. The fact that it's got a claw on here, an angled claw, is for pulling out um, fasteners, uh, nails, uh, anything that you've you've driven in and it's gone sideways or you need to pull it apart or you're doing demolition or something. Um, again, this is a seven ounce. Uh, this is a little better one with a fiberglass handle um, and uh, you know a little bit more heft. Uh, this cheap cobalt is the same thing. These are the three that I've used um, pretty much for everything, uh, for woodworking, for small projects and whatnot. Now, when I got into framing stuff, uh, when I bought this house and I redid the basement and framed in a wood shop from just one big uh, open room uh, that was just a kind of a game room, I, I needed something that could keep all the sawdust and everything in, I went and bought a framing hammer with a straight claw, so to speak. Um, this is like a uh, 19 ounce and they make these up to like 23, 26. Uh, this is a Vaughn, which I find that and Istwing are probably the best ones. American made, these are made in Illinois, I think. Um, phenomenal hammer. Um, it's got a magnetic uh, hold for a, ma uh, for a nail so that if you were hitting something above your head, you couldn't get your hand up there to hold the nail. You can put it in there and tack it in and, and it'll get started and you can uh, hammer away. But as you see the difference in these, not only in size, but length, the leverage that you can get in, in framing, oh, it's worth its weight in gold. And these are not crazy expensive, you know, they're uh, 25, 40 bucks uh, hammers, but they, they just make a incredible product. And I love using this. Anytime I go out with a bag, um, I always, always take a framing hammer uh, just because it can get so much more work done. I mean, you, you can easily drive a nail in with one, one, uh, one hit. This has got a waffled face as opposed to the, uh, the smooth face of these, um, uh, wood hammers. Um, and, and that's just for glancing blows so that it, it kind of strikes the, the head of the, the fastener and the nail and, and, and doesn't slide off and all, but Vaughn makes a, a phenomenal product. And, um, that, that's kind of from here going forward, any, any hammer that I need, I'm going to try to find in a Vaughn um, uh, model because I, I just think that they make a great product. So that's basically your woodworking stuff. Um, I, I have a real problem with someone working on a car and bringing this. Like it, it's, it's, yeah, it'll work. You can tap something, you know, you hit a starter to get it going or whatever. But I, I just, it's sacrilege to me. It's blasphemous to me to use this anywhere near a vehicle. Okay. 
uh, much the same way as I wouldn't use a ball peen to drive a nail in. If that's all I got, I will go find a wood hammer just because it just doesn't feel right. It doesn't look right. And that's just not what it was meant for, even though it will do the job. It's just not, that's not the point. Um, these orange ones are dead blows. This is a one and a half that I keep in my, my bag when I go to the, uh, the scrap yard or a salvage yard to, to pull parts. And then this is a two and a half. Um, these have, if you can hear, it's got some kind of shot in it. It could be, you know, lead shot, sand, whatever. Um, and basically the point of this is to be able to strike something as hard as you want. And when that goes back, all that shot goes forward and it keeps it from having so much rebound. So you don't bounce off of something. Whereas if you were to use a normal hammer and you hit something really hard, it could come back and, you know, pop you in the face or whatever. But these are, these are dead blow hammers for that reason. You can, you can hit something and it kind of stays down uh, and it doesn't have the rebound. These are great. Um, I've used these um, for so many things and they're just very, very handy. Um, you know, so I would definitely pick up a couple of those if you're going to be doing any kind of work where you got to hit stuff with, with any kind of force. Uh, this is like a scutch, I think is what they're called, uh, but basically a masonry hammer. Um, this is just a, a low end cobalt and it's basically able to chip away brick or block um, and then and then hit it so that it'll crack and you can make lines with it. Um, these are really... Um, I mean, yeah, you could drive nails in this, but it, it's not, it's so short you would wear yourself out uh, because you have to hit the nail so many times. I mean, that's, that's leverage is, is key in this. Uh, physics plays a large part in, in hammer development. Uh, but if you're doing block work or, or brick work or anything, this is obviously the tool that you want to have. Um, and then S-Wing, again, that's probably the, the that and Vaughn are the two that I would go with. This is a two pound sledge that I use quite a bit. Uh, it's not heavy enough to, to wear you out, but you can get it in small places and, and do things that you need to do. It's always nice to have a sledge. Um, the BFH, as it's called, the big effing hammer, um, this is a four pound. So when you when <laughs> this one doesn't get what you need done, you pull this out and then you've got a couple bigger ones like that. And then you can move up to an actual sledge hammer. Um, but that's, that's a completely different animal. Uh, but these are great because they do so many things well and you can't break them. And uh, these are fiberglass handles, um, S-Wing and Stanley. Uh, Stanley makes a good, you know, mid-grade, I guess, um, is what you would call that. But this is a Fat Max. I like their Fat Max uh, series of tools. Um, they're, they're pretty good, actually. I, I've actually got a, a Fat Max um, tape in my in my bag that I, I really like. Um, and uh, but this these these are great for pounding the crap out of something and not worrying about you know a what you're damaging, hopefully, um, but also the fact that you're not going to mess up the hammer. So, so that's then you got your soft mallets. Um, I've got a different series of these. This is a really small one for doing things that you you want to. You don't really need a lot of pressure, but you also don't want to mar the surface. That's why it's got rubber. You know they're they're there so that they don't they don't mess up the surface of whatever you're hitting. Um, so I've got these two, and then uh, um, a, a little heavier one that that I can hit stuff with. Um, and you know you can see chunks have been taken out of it because I've abused these things, but no more than they cost, wear them out, throw them away, get a new one. Um, it, it'll take you a few years of doing it, but you can tell I've, I've got a, a lot of things I've hit that have, have done it, but marring the surface of whatever um, item that you're hitting is not really an issue because you've got that with you. Um, I've got a bomb that I picked up a while back. Uh, this is a 24 ounce um, with mallet with, with different um, uh, soft uh, heads on it and these are replaceable so when they wear out you can pop a new one on uh, but again Vaughn just makes an awesome product and I love the fact they're made in USA because we should all be buying stuff that's made in the USA and not China and other countries that, that make crap and don't support our economy but that's a different story um, but this is a this is a great uh, mallet um, it's got a lot of uh, heft to it it's again it's 24 ounces so you can really put some force behind it and um, I've used this for uh, tons of stuff. A lot of people buy these just to put paint cans on, and that's cool, whatever. I mean, you wouldn't want to put a paint can on with a ball peen hammer because you're gonna you're gonna mess up the can, and it's probably not gonna open as well as it did before. Um, here is a, uh, a a little tiny. Um, I don't even know what the head of this is. It's some kind of composite type, whatever. But this thing probably weighs like three or four ounces, and it, I do it for small wood products or wood projects that that I'm doing that I just need to tap stuff in or, or small chisel stuff. 
um, and, and not be able to put enough force to hurt anything. So that's pretty handy. This is the same thing, except just a little bit version, a bigger version of it. Might This might be four, four and a half, five ounces. Um, they're really light, but, but they're really, they're really useful when you, when you need to get something and, and not damage it. This one I've had forever. This is an older craftsman. Um, it's a, it's a 12 ounce and it's just different, uh, mallets. And I've, use this thing that the head on the red side is mushroomed out it's a lot softer than the than the yellow um i've used this thing for probably the better part of 20 years and uh it's still going um it's you know got chunks taken out of it and it's been whipped to crap but it still hangs in there and it was made when craftsman was still making really nice stuff um for for the money and all um here i have a one pound fiberglass brass hammer uh this is for hitting metals that you don't want to mess up um, you know, you use this for things that, uh, metals that if you were to hit it with a normal hammer, it would mess it up. The, the brass is so much softer and it's able to hit other metal and, um, and, and tap things in and whatnot without damaging the metal surface. Because obviously if you damage metal, you've got to find a new part or be able to fabricate your own. So these are really, really handy, um, when they, when they go along. Um, and then the last major set that I have are all ball peens. Um, I've got what, like, uh, seven ball peens here. Um, the, I, I just love ball peen hammers. Uh, this one is just really old. The handle is, it's got little indentation, so it feels really good in your hand. I keep this in my, in one of my trucks. Um, I, the reason it's a ball peen hammer is because it's got a regular face. Uh, this one's mushroomed out a bit cause it's been used so much. And then the ball side of it for working metal, um, for putting, you know, um, any kind of concave stuff in there. It's also used for fasteners. You know, if you were using rivets and you wanted to splay out the, the outside of a rivet head, um, I don't have a lot of call for that, but uh, nevertheless, I do find uh, purposes for the ball side of the hammer. Um, and you got that. So this is just a lighter version uh, for when you got smaller pieces. This is an old, old Vaughn um, that, that, God, I, this thing was probably from the sixties or something. Uh, I don't even know, but uh, it's it's significantly lighter. Um, this is the same thing, even lighter, uh, but with a fiberglass handle. This is just a, uh, I think this is a Northern Tool uh, edition that uh, I got. Yeah, it's a Northern Tool, like a clutch or something. And I, I got this just because I needed a smaller one for, for smaller jobs where I don't need as much force and I'm trying to be precise, but yet hit, um, hit items that need to be hit. And this is a 16 ounce ball peen. Um, this is another clutch from Northern Tool. And I, I find a lot of their, I've got a lot of their sockets and stuff. And for what you pay, um, I think the clutch stuff, uh, uh, some of my um, wrenches are clutch. Um, they they come in clutch. What are you going to do? Uh, but no, I, I think that they, they do really well. They've got lifetime guarantee. Um, I find Northern Tool to be a, it's kind of a, a mix of, yeah, there's some foreign stuff made there, but there's also some, some good quality things. Uh, Ingersoll Rand and whatnot, and they've got some good, um, you know, pressure washers and, and stuff like that. So I, I enjoy going there and I always go there and spend way too much money than more money than I intended to spend. But I got these just to have a couple different options because I put ball peens in most of my, most of my trucks just to have a hammer with me at all times. Um, this one is a, I can't even tell what brand it is, but it's a lot like the, uh, uh, this one here, they're about the same height, uh, same length. I'm sorry, same weight, but uh, this one's just a hair bit longer. This was, these were both uh, belong to my grandfather, so they're, they're these three older ones are, are pretty weathered and, and worn out. But um, that's what they do, right? Uh, and then lastly, I've had this Craftsman uh, probably as long as I've had this one. Um, this thing's twenty some years old, and uh, it's been great. This is like a fourteen ounce, maybe something like that. And on the thing, it tells you wear safety glasses. And although that seems silly to put that on there, but um, wearing safety glasses is a huge component of working with tools. Uh, if you chainsaw or if you hammer stuff and God knows if you grind stuff, I had a grinder blade uh, explode on me just about two weeks ago and I was wearing safety glasses, fortunately, and it flew off beside my head. But I'm telling you, man, uh, you won't, uh, you won't, miss your eyes until you don't have eyes but uh and and eye injuries oh that's that's fun right there so um definitely wear safety glasses the fact they have to write this on a hammer is is you know all you need to really know and then lastly i picked this up this is just a cheap pittsburgh that i got at harbor fright 
just because I needed one that could get in small places for, for tapping in different things and whatnot, mostly on cars um, and, and all. But but again, if, if I'm working on a car, I have a vault ball peen in my hand if I need a hammer. I do not use a claw hammer for that, and I do not go in and put wood projects together with a ball peen. If that's all I have, then I will wait and I will go find a claw hammer because it just doesn't seem right. And it negates the purpose of having all these different hammers. So the last one I'll talk about are these specialty hammers, which are just basically body hammers. Um, they've got all kinds of different things for working metal. Um, the flat face, um, this has got kind of a, a, a beveled, chiseled look. This is kind of a point uh, that you could bury into somebody's skull if you really needed to. Um, and uh, this one, again, flat face. You've got a rounded off flat face and then a, a rounded off square face. Um, and then these are, you know, angled uh, for different types of metal you're working. And, you know, you take these with dollies and, uh, you know, you put that on the inside of the metal and, and you can you can form metal. It's very time consuming, uh, but that is what you would want to use. You would not want to come in here and, you know, start doing that kind of crap. It's just not, it's not right. It's not what they were meant to do. And having the right tool is perfunctory for everything that you do with regards to tools. So, you know, uh, I, I think that the, the days of um, going to somebody's house and saying, hey, man, can I get a can I get a hammer? And this is maybe what they have, you know, and it's fine, dude. I mean, a cobalt hammer, this thing probably cost like 18 bucks or something when I bought it years and years ago. And I only bought it because I needed a spare to put somewhere. Um, I can't remember what I was doing, but I had two different places I needed claw hammers and I just got sick of going back and getting the other one. So I just bought this thing and, and it's been fine. I mean, no more than you use it, especially with wood. And one of the things too, with, with this, which I like, you know, if we go over why one's straight and one's clawed, if you've got a fastener, a nail that's stuck and you put it in there and you roll that thing up, your leverage is going to pop that nail right out. Whereas this one is going to be a lot more difficult. You know, you're going to have to put a block of wood or something underneath that to get the leverage that you need because then it creates that angle to pop it up. But what I like about this is, is it, it's long enough and it's sharp enough that if I, if I'm sitting there working on something and, uh, I need a piece of wood, I can flip that thing over and, and hammer into it and pull the wood to me. Um, whereas this is a lot harder to do that. Um, it, it just doesn't, it doesn't do, you'd almost have to pull it and it doesn't work. But this thing you can use almost as an ax to grab a, a two by four. It'll stick in there, pull it to you. And you don't have to waste so much time getting up, getting down and all that stuff, depending on what you're doing. Um, another thing, uh, before we close with, with hammer 101 is you see a lot of people using these things wrong. And it doesn't matter what hammer we're using here, unless you're just in here, just tapping something but even there i still i use the back of it okay leverage is leverage there's a reason that the handle is here and not on this yellow part you see people hammering like that and that's just tapping a nail in for example um you know if i if i've got this thing and i put a nail in there and i, I tap it started i can one two and it's done you know at, at most two hits um keep your eye on the nail and uh you're gonna miss everybody misses uh but you know the, the the more you do it the better you get i remember my grandfather teaching me to drive a nail and that was like one of the hardest things to get good at but you just got to keep doing it and eventually it just becomes second nature and you just bam they're in but you've got to grab it back here you know if i grab this thing even in the middle i mean it's still a, a good handle um you know because you know it's it's where i would grab you know a smaller one normally but you're losing all the leverage and power that comes from hitting that thing at the back. There's a reason that this is, you know, uh, brought in a little bit more for your hand because that's where you're supposed to put your hand because that's where the power is delivered. And bring that thing down, you know, don't just hammer here 18 times. If we're going for, for uh, efficiency, then bring it down, you know, and put some power into it and hit the thing, you know, like it owes you money. Um, but again, 28 hammers. I think I got two or three more floating around here somewhere, but those are the majority of the ones that I use for stuff. Um, and I love the fact that, um, they all feel different in your hand. They all have their own purpose and it just feels right when you're doing something to grab a specific item that you need and have the tool that works for you best. So that is a hammer tutorial, a hammer 101, a hammer primer, as it were. Um, so any questions, put them in the comments. Giddy up.